Hi, this is Jules3 at Batho Studios. This is a small tutorial on some texturing, UV mapping. Um, the Outrun Vaporwave aesthetic is one of my favorites. Uh, I like the music, I like the aesthetic quite a bit. I've always been wanting to uh, try to get some of these textures uh, figured out to put into some games, put into game objects, maybe looks nice in the background or things you're working with. Um, so this is the most basic kind of uh, text right here. So I'm showing right here right now, one with uh, some more sophisticated mapping and one without, one with just the texture and one with the actual bump. You can see. So let's jump right in on how to do that. And this is assuming that <clears throat> you already know how to uh, export uh, proper dot uh, uh, FBX with you know your materials and all that stuff ready to go. So if you do not know how to do that, I recommend finding a YouTube tutorial on that. There's plenty of them out there, I promise. Uh, I'm gonna get set up here. So uh, we're gonna assume that you've imported your FBX into your favorite game engine. In this case, I'm gonna be using Unreal Engine 4. Uh, you can use Unity or any, really anything that you can accept uh, this file that you've created. In Blender, I made materials for it already. There's, there's tutorials on how to properly prepare all of this. Um, I've dragged my FBX onto my scene, and now I'm ready to modify these materials. I'm gonna go ahead and find some materials, and right here for each cube. Let's open this up in Photoshop. <clears throat> and this is what we have. We have kind of a, a little list of outlines of <laughs> Of our, of our texture map. So we're gonna actually replicate what you saw earlier. <clears throat> I'm gonna use some selection magic first. So here we go. I'm go ahead and make a selection of this middle guy right here. I'm probably gonna have to redo that. Yep, missed off by a pixel. There we go. Okay, so I have my first selection here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer. Keep my selection. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with a um, with like a dark gray. I want it, I want to keep it dark gray, not black, because I want to add some noise and add a little bit of add something that gives bump to this, give some texture with UV mapping. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go ahead and fill, press okay, now I have this center square. Excellent. Now, normally I would just keep filling <clears throat> on this, but I, I want a selection. Let's see, yeah, let's, let, I, want, I want at least one of these cubes saved, and, and I'll show you why later on, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer. Hide that one. Do the same thing. Let's fill that again. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and fill everything else here. And everything should match up pretty well. I put some rulers in preemptively. Yeah, everything should match up well enough to fill things in pretty simply, pretty straightforward. Make sure you get all the way to the end there. Oops. Okay, so we have this big plus sign. And you know, of course, it's going to wrap around our object once we're in our game. So now we want, we want more to this though. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we're gonna do is work on that little and we're going to make a new layer. We're going to call back our selection from that layer that we left alone. We're going to hold control, and then we just go over here and we click on this thumbnail. And oh, there's our selection again. That's exactly what we want. We're even on our new layer still. It's perfect. So how am I going to do this? Well, there's a couple of ways we could do this. Uh, probably the simplest way <clears throat> is I'm going to fill this in with like a kind of an outrun pink sort of sort of color, kind of like that. I 
I'm going to go up here to uh, select, transform selection. I'm going to click this link here to link our width and our height percentages. I'm going to go to 98%, press enter, or uh, excuse me, press check mark. And then I'm just going to delete, deselect. I have my little wireframe border. And since it's on its own layer, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this a few times. I want four. And I'm going to move them around. Powering off. Nudge them if they nudge them into place, they don't quite fit. Oh, I'm missing one. I'm going to try and drag it. I'm missing it because I didn't make it. And it's not going to be, you know, it, it hypothetically should be perfect by pixel, but, you know, it, it's not what it actually exports from Blender. Um, but it's close enough. And uh, for this tutorial, this is as close as we're going to get. You can make everything perfect, like absolutely perfect if you want, like making these inner lines a little bit. You can match up this bottom one. It's, it's, it's this bottom one. It's, it's a little more like that, something like that. You can perfect it. And uh, you know, I, I did better on the other ones. I perfected it because I, I wanted to spend the time to do that. Um, but right now, I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. You know, zoom in, get right to the pixel, and modify things as you want. Anyway, we're going to go back to this selection. We're going to select uh, that. Again, you hold down Control, hit the thumbnail, and you get the selection back. We're on our layer 2, though, our, our giant plus sign layer. And right now, we just have the middle selected. Go ahead and go to filter. I'm going to go to noise. I'm going to add some noise. Uh, two or three, probably good. Let's do three just because I want I want you to see it. I'm going Gaussian monochromatic. Okay. Great. Now you could select all the other areas. And, and do this individually, or do it one at a time as they're all selected. Um, I'm just going to move this around and, and uh, do it a few times. I'll probably speed this up. OK, now that all the noise is added, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to put kind of a false sense of lighting and uh, how I'm going to do that is uh, with a kind of a, a blur, a rotational blur on each little little section. So let's start with the one we already have selected. Might as well. I'm going to filter. <clears throat> I'm going to blur. And then ro radial blur. Yeah, I called it, what did I call it? Rotational? <laughs> I'm going to go with two. Uh, one is good too, but yeah, very subtle, very subtle. Very, very subtle from afar. It'll, it'll create a sort of fake shadowy lighting kind of. Um, fake lighting. Yeah, it's kind of in the days before procedural lighting, you know, things that people did. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here. I'll do the same thing the next few times. I'll speed it up. Okay. We have our blurs on. This is the most basic form of our outrun texture. It'll give it kind of that wireframe sense, but it'll also give it some, some meat to it, some some density with uh, the noise we added and with the uh, little blur we added. And of course, you make everything darker, make it look more like it's transparent or more wire. You know, you, you mess with this. This is kind of just a, a stepping stone, a little a little basic tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and save this. Make sure I'm saving this correctly. Sometimes it wants to make a PSD, but 
okay, yeah, PNG or whatever, you know, whatever your material was by default for your FX or your, excuse me. Okay, now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and jump into, back into our editor. Go ahead and import that. Save that. And I'm gonna go ahead and select one of our materials. I think this is the one closest to the camera. We don't want none. We want our new texture map. And the most basic of, of uh, configurations. Okay. And as you can see, we have a working outrun Vaporwave-esque cube. But that's just the basic texture. We want some more tubes. We want it to look better. OK, well, Photoshop doesn't necessarily, there are different plugins you can get for it. There are different programs to do what I'm about to do. I'm going to do what I'm about to do because it's very quick and handy. If you go to Normal Map Online, love this website. The person who made this is a genius. He should be commended. Um, you can literally just drag and drop what you want uh, changed here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double this. I'm going to save this again as uh, save it again as another PNG. It's my UV map B texture map B. Yes. Okay. Map B, drag it in. Well, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, let's just do that again. That's, that's what I wanted. Okay. As you can see, this website's great. You can see your normal map, displacement, Grammy oscillation, your specular. You can modify some things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save each of these. I'm going to download this. Normal map, yes. And I already missed that one. So my normal map. And my displacement. And my oscillation. And the spec. And we're done. Thank you so much for this website. Donate. Donate to them. I should donate to them. Anyway, now back in our editor, we have our different material here, and we want to assign sort of the same thing, but we don't just want to slap that texture on. We want to we want to do a little more. We want to fill all these nodes up. And then here in Unity, you do the uh, equivalent of separating these sort of things. First, we have to import all this stuff. We want our ambient, we want our displacement, our normal, our specular, and our second texture map. And we're there. I'm going to immediately hit Control S and save them. That takes care of that. Um, usually it comes up with a warning saying, it might come up with a warning saying it's going to import your normal map as a normal map. If that comes up, just hit OK. It should be fine. And now you can just drag and drop. Just like before, I'm gonna, it's going to be my base. OK. But I this time, I have things like a normal map to normal, specular. Ambient. And if you wanted to use your displacement map, you could throw that in as well. I'm going to head and just show you this effect right now. Save and apply. Yep, yep. We can go ahead and close that. And there we go. We're back to where we started, or you know, what I was showing you. 
kind of vaporwave outrun texture. One just the texture, one with some bump to it. And from you know from afar, close. I'm gonna jump into the preview. And uh, oh, I guess there was a preview going by my mistake. I'm gonna jump into a uh, preview and show you a little bit more up close. Okay. Oh, my controller died. Oh, I'm gonna cut the. Okay, there we go. I was gonna cut that and do it again, but it came back. So a little closer. Yeah. Let's see here. Compared to this one, there is a difference. And of course, this is. These are big objects. You can make them smaller, higher resolution. It's really just how you want to make your actual models. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to try and make some more Outrun Vaporwave themed texture tutorials. And, uh, and, and my goal really is to make more uh, game assets in this kind of aesthetic and this kind of style. Uh, I think we need more games like it. And thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.